letter to my own family. Dear Coventry, I love you, although I know not why, and days when the washed out graves of tallow blood blend in with the haggard sky. There are times, Coventry, I would gladly see you burn, mornings when smiles at passing strangers raised this hostility in return. Yes, it can feel like Germany had the right idea, but brick by brick you scraped your way back, carving new horizons out of fear. Your streets aren't paved with gold, instead studded with gum chewed. The pigeons to peck at disappointed you, then move on to what's been spewed. Staring to the river Sherborne, if I had one wish, I'd replace the litter and shopping trolleys with hundreds of happy fish. I am no larkin, I will not disown this city. It's too deeply seeded in my nature, the roots of my family tree. From Hamilton up north and Dublin overseas, my whole gene pool travelled to benefit from your new thriving industries. Thus she fed and clothed my kin for three generations. To jump ship without giving anything back would call for explanation. Coventry, I bear witness to the efforts she made. Wanting tourist admiration induces scenic changes for their sake. You're like pretty women who haven't yet realized their best assets are not enhanced curves and keep the intelligence disguised. Sure, a coffee franchise here and there pleases the crowd, but don't forget historic significance is of what we should be proud. Spires punch the sky in triumph, cathedral walls stand tall, buildings both medieval and Tudor prove that Luftwaffe couldn't take it all. There are no goosebumps on with either. She is too strong to let winter spoil her ride, the legend. A proud city proves me wrong. Dear Coventry, I love you, and know exactly why. The same fondness reserved for parents and pets. I am yours, and you are mine. Uh, <clears throat> the spirit of Coventry rose from the ashes. Its feathers a bit charred, beak slightly mangled, talons caked in blood and soot. The bird commanded respect, but wasn't a pretty sight, squawking racist views and seeking confrontation on Saturday nights. A phoenix has purity, born of fiery sacrifice. A pigeon will defecate where it eats and lives. On closer inspection, what had arisen turned out to be not quite a phoenix. In this building, Morris manufactured engines. Grandma built bombs. Taxes were sliced off wages. And now I sit inside this building half listening to a lecture on the prospects for my future. They want me in motion, exploding with ambition, paying my share of the burden. I asked Grandma how it felt to hold death in your hands, to be a cog in the killing machine. She told me we didn't think of it like that. People back then just got on with it. I think people still do. I've sleepwalked through ships, pressed buttons like a trained monkey, filled thick sow sheets and paper cups conscripted into the nine to five. And now I'm dodging the draft, running back to the trenches to hide, tunneling out escape routes that could well be nowhere. Some would call this cowardice, but it's only a tactical retreat, reloading before I go over the top to battle again with reality. Jason.